I made a last minute decision to join my mom for the last week of the Camino. My mom and her friend Julie began their pilgrimage in Porto, Portugal, and each day their trek brought them north, closer and closer to their final destination of the cathedral that sits in the center of the city of Santiago de Compostela. And I wanted to join, which meant finding them wherever they were in their journey when I flew in. And my journey begins with Oscar. That's in like a 5 a.m. wake up time. Finally got to Portugal after like 30 hours of travel. It was craziness to find my driver and now I need to find my mom. Heading into Spain to an albergue that she should be in. Finisterre. Finisterre yeah. is the end of the world yeah. in Latin. So the people start in French, yeah. go the road of the stars at night and finish in Finisterre. Okay. The end of the world because in this time in Europe uh, the end of the world is in Finisterre. Yeah. America, not America. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the river, Spain, I'm Spain. What? This is so cool! We took a little detour and Oscar brought me some coffee and we we're talking about philosophy and he's showing me this beautiful little town. A special little night. Perfect. No, it's here. No. Where's my mom? Hmm. Albergue or Padron, no? Is this? But you ask better. I don't okay? know. Each night was spent in an albergue, which is a hostel specifically for pilgrims. They cost about 10 to 15 euros per person, and I found these to be really, really wonderful. They have bathrooms and showers, sometimes kitchen areas, and they even provide a clean covering for your bed. In the mornings, people around us began stirring any time between 4.30 and 9 o'clock a.m. And then you start walking. <laughs> We're officially a little less than 10 kilometers away from Santiago. Yay! I'm feeling great and it seems very surreal though. Like what? I don't want to be done yet. We can't be to the end yet, but climbing the hill, not so much. During the hours of walking, I often thought about how easy it can be as children to forget that our parents are really just like us that they have wonderful friends and deep struggles, and just like anyone else, they want to be supported in their goals and adventures and throughout any shifts in their life, like my mother has done effortlessly for me over the last 29 years. And so this was one of the best aspects of this trip, was that it wasn't my trip, it was their trip. 
And after 12 days of walking 15 to 30 kilometers each day, my mom and Julie caught their first glimpse of the cathedral. Congratulations! <laughs> where over 350,000 pilgrims travel to on foot every year. And it's in this moment when people often reconnect with the family they've made along the way. <laughs> starting the Camino de Finisterre and so we're beginning at the cathedral and here we go <laughs> a few hard days in front of us and we're on the way to the end of the world mm -hmm. ready So we've been hiking for, oh, maybe an hour. <laughs> and we turned, we saw a yellow arrow going up this like, you know, steep-ish grade. And as we were finishing it, I turned to mom and I said, hey, this looks a lot like where we started this morning. <laughs> and it was. I know, who we'll believe it? We walked right up to our very first marker from this morning. So now we are working on backtracking to see if we had missed. A marker somewhere. A marker kind uh, Spaniard stopped him and his wife and knew that we were doing the Camino and gave us directions um, to get back up to our spot but it's still we still want those confidence markers to make sure we're in the right path because if we take something different then we're really going to be out in the middle of nowhere which is where we are right now <laughs> <laughs> Well, we backtracked, we found it. Turns out we had walked by this construction equipment and it was blocking the sign. So after making our loop back to Santiago de Compostela, we're finally back on our route. Whoa, he's so cool. It took me a few days to adjust to, well, walking all day, but there was a lot of freedom in that adjustment. I stopped craving mental distractions and my legs and my back strengthened. And I started to appreciate small things like a soft trail or a cool breeze or an ice cold water fountain. Or when we neared signs that told us that our destination for that day was right around the corner. We're both pretty dehydrated. Mom is ready to go, feeling great. And I am so sore. She's been hiking for like 14 days. And this is the start of my third day. And I'm really feeling it. How are you feeling, Mom? I'm feeling great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful morning. It's dark, though. <laughs> Neither of us slept well, but that's okay, it's kind of just how it all works when you sleep in. In the hostel, the, the hostel. doorway had an automatic light, so every time somebody got up to go to the bathroom, it would flash on and then it would turn off, and when they'd come out of the bathroom, it would flash on again. So we got a lot of, I don't know, probably 20 times. Yeah, until like 1.30 a.m. <laughs> anyway, oh, we had such a great supper last night, so we're well fed. We've yeah. got an um, apple and an orange 
and some yogurt to start our day when we need it. <laughs> um, but we're always be looking for that first cup of coffee. So we'll probably have that around 11. <laughs> Actually, yogurt? I don't know what that word means underneath it. Is that you know real? What? I think it's made with vegetable something. Bueno. Hola. Hola. Bueno. Yes. Hola. Camera. People, go, people go by and I'm just saying good. <laughs> How is it? Excellent. Ah. Such a good soup, honey. Good. Do you want to explain what up? What we just got? Well, some cafes offer things called pilgrim meals and so um, when you stop you ask for the pilgrim meal and usually they it, it's but is um, like bread um, this time it's soup but we had a choice of an omelet which is just eggs and potatoes together or and then one entree I'm having fried eggs with salad and then a dessert like um, right, I'm gonna have ice cream <laughs> Or you could have coffee, because coffee is usually an after-dinner drink. And you need to have um, been walking the Camino. And the way that you walk the Camino and show that you've been doing it is you have um, credentials. And every place that you stop, you get a stamp with a date. And so if you have, you have to have like two stamps a day to get into your albergue or um, even to get this pilgrim meal. And when we've got this filled out and we get to Finisterre, then we get um, a certificate that says we did this grand thing. <laughs> <laughs> Little bed sheets. You walk through tiny villages in the Meseta right. and you go into the church and the whole organ loft's covered in pure gold. Yep, yep. But in the Middle Ages, they were convinced this was God's home on earth. It is a chilly, misty morning and it's beautiful. This has been my favorite albergue so far. It's just tucked away in this really tiny, tiny village. And we had lentil soup and it was homemade lentil soup by the woman that like owns and runs the albergue and she came out with this big pot and scooped it into our bowls and just feels like I'm like at grandma's house and I slept really well last night. It's just so beautiful and such an incredible way to see a country, like walking through it. I feel so much gratitude. I feel like it's such a special way to experience another, another country, another culture. It's so neat. How are you feeling? I'm feeling wonderful. Me too. It's just so beautiful and a beautiful breeze cools us down. We're so lucky to be here. So 
we just came to this little sign. Looks like there's, might be swimming, 500 meters that way. So we're gonna see where it takes us. Look at this. This is probably the best skinny dipping hole I've ever found in my life. This has been probably my favorite day so far. I'm kind of shocked that nobody else is down here. We haven't seen a single person while we've been swimming and hanging out and drying off. I think it's a little past noon and mom and I decided to walk back up to the really small, I don't even think it could be considered a town. Yeah, it is, it's called Lagosa. And we're gonna eat lunch there. There's one albergue and one restaurant. And then we believe that there is 15 more kilometers until the next albergue, which will be a perfect amount of walking for us for the day. Pretty full day, but stopping here was like the best decision ever. I agree. <laughs> Mom got a vegetable sandwich and I got a chicken sandwich. And so we combined ours so that it had chicken and vegetables on it. And then we're gonna pack up this extra bread. How was that? Good. Excellent. I love the bread, it's so crunchy and and hearty. Well, let me get out of the <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure where I should go, but Hello everybody. Oh, there's the dog. Yeah. Wet. We're stopping for a little break. This stretch is long and I'm most excited about this leftover bread from lunch. We could get there if we push through the night. <laughs> ah, you just love my joke. Feels like it's picked right off the tree. <laughs> it does. It is so good. <laughs> that. <laughs> Just to remind you that we're in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I want to see this video. People <laughs> 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 we're, we're getting slap happy. I'm so lucky to be with Linnea on the last day of her 28th year. <laughs> And 29 years ago, I gave birth to this gem. But last year, she didn't even know how old I was. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the month, we'll have a 67-year-old on our hands. Mm-hmm. Hot and ready to go. <laughs> our first good view of the Atlantic Ocean. We shared this albergue with only one person, so it was very empty. But now mom and I are heading off, and this is mom's final day, and it's my birthday. Mom's final day, my birthday, 
It would be a good one. Well, I guess it's my final day, too. So we're going to be heading to the end of the world. What a great birthday gift. Onward to our last day. We slept in a little bit this morning, so right now it is about 8.30. So it's a lot lighter than what we've been hiking in, in the morning because typically we've been starting a few hours earlier. So we would hike in the dark, watch the sun come up. Um, but now we just started in the light. But there's your rooster. We have about 17 and a half kilometers today. So this is this is my shortest day and it's is it your shortest day as well? Probably, yes. Probably. So 17 kilometers is about 14 miles. Oh, no. About 10 miles. 10 10 or 11 miles ish. It's it's short compared to what we've been doing. We did stop for one more cup of coffee, which was great because from the road you couldn't see it, but when we stopped at this like cafe, there was this beautiful beach and stone. It was, it was gorgeous and we wouldn't have known that it was there if we didn't stop for coffee. And now it looks like it's bringing us back to the coast. This has been a really, really beautiful day. How are you feeling? Well, we're basically the here. End of the world. I don't know. We're in the little town now. We just walked up from that very cute little town, and we think the end be it. is here. This final day of our journey led us not only to that lovely zero kilometer marker, but also the piece of land that was once believed to be the end of the world, or the sun's resting place. A total of about 350 kilometers from where my mom began. Well, it's really surreal being up here, this high up in the Atlantic Ocean. It just doesn't seem real. It's beautiful here. We're way up in the sky. The last leg was little torturous up 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 and when we thought we were just going to be walking into the ocean and we saw a big huge hill we had to be climbing but you know what we just buckled down and did the last leg and made it up here and it was definitely well worth it it was and it's beautiful here it is beautiful we're so fortunate all these mountains and all the atlantic ocean greeting us What am I going to do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mom's peeing. This is so yellow. You got anything else to say? Because my shoulder's burning. <laughs> I think I might have dropped my camera a few too many times now. And these little guys, I just think they're so cute. Sorry. Oh my gosh, he went up all up in there. Oh, it gets chunky at the bottom. There's chunks down there. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> when we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are